One of the other major concepts in statics is how do we represent, in a mathematical sense, forces and moments. Right? In the, we'll first do this in two dimensions, and then we'll follow this up with a three-dimensional uh, example. Okay? So here we have a generic force that has a point of application. It is a vector quantity. That's hugely important, right? Because vectors have points of application, they have a direction, and they have a magnitude. And this representation can be done in a variety of ways. Oftentimes, especially in 2D, we simply refer to the direction that the force makes with respect to the positive x-axis. So this force, which now in uh, vector notation would have this little arrow to indicate, hey, we mean a vector quantity, will have its scalar magnitude, the length, if we're drawing this proportionally, the length of that arrow with that sort of absolute value sign posted around it. Right? And then it is, again, with reference to a specific angle theta. Right? Now, in terms of uh, i and j kinds of quantities, remember that we sometimes like to talk about this in terms of an i component, a j component, and those are the unit vectors in the x and y axes, respectively, that we can represent that force now as equal to the x component times i plus the y component times j. And the way these then all begin to work together is that <coughs> fx, the x component, is equal in our right triangle geometry just equal to the magnitude of f times cosine theta. And of course, Fy is equal to f times sine of theta. And note that also means that, of course, tangent of theta is equal to the ratio of rise over run, so that'd be Fy over Fx. And if you were to use an absolute rigid sign convention, meaning that you always measured theta positive counterclockwise from the x positive x-axis, these equations as shown here would always be correct in two dimensions. Now, for moments, um, moments are nothing but the effect of a force in terms of spinning something, uh, spinning an object um, relative to a point. Right, so here we have a force called F sub B that's passing through point B, but note that we're going to look at a moment of that force associated with point A, a different point. And in 2D, the simple way to talk about that is just simply that the magnitude of the moment with respect to A is just equal to the force magnitude times the perpendicular distance, or what's oftentimes called the moment arm. That's the amount of twisting that, that's how we measure the amount of twist, and some people will call that a torque about point A. Choose a different point, and the moment or the torque will be uh, a different magnitude, unless you just so carefully choose another point that has exactly the same perpendicular distance that also causes either the same clockwise rotation, as in this case, or counterclockwise, as might be another case. Right, now, there's other ways to do this, um, and it's useful in 3D, not so much in 2D, but in 3D, you could say, hey, the moment vector, which now has i and j and k, if we get the 3D kinds of properties, will be equal to our vector AB, that's a position vector, cross then our force vector. Right? And in 2D, that's really not particularly all that useful. Um, it's usually more often the case that I might want to instead break my force into a component here that is in the y direction and also in the x direction, in which case now note I'll have two different perpendicular distances to be concerned about, one associated with the, the y direction and one associated with the x direction. And the way that math is now going to work is that the moment about A is going to be that F sub Y times DX. Notice that we have the flip-flop of the subscripts because here's the Y component first uh, force and the uh, X component distance. And then we have a 
fx time component of the force times dy distance. Right. And whether these are plus or minuses and how that all works, well, that depends on what you call the positive sign convention. If we use a right-hand rule, right, stick the thumb coming out at us and the fingers curl around in a counterclockwise fashion, then relative to point A, Fy will be going in a clockwise direction, so that is a minus, whereas notice that with Fx, it's passing underneath point A, tends to create a counterclockwise rotation, so we'd end up with that. And notice that inherently I just described that rotation is perpendicular in terms of its vector to the plane in which these forces are happening, right? What really is happening, this is a plane kind of problem and two-dimensional plane, and so the rotation that's happening is directly in the same plane as Fx and Fy. It's just that the vector representation of that would be the third axis sticking out perpendicular to that plane.